The NFL put the Rooney rule into effect 13 years ago. So this rule requires teams to interview minority candidates for head coaching in senior football operation jobs. Now, the commissioner who helped develop it, Paul Tagliabu, isn't too happy with how it's played out. He's saying this at an athletics forum to Sports Business Daily. I don't think the Rooney rule has done as much as anyone hoped it would. What it is, five out of 32, everyone feels, I am sure, that it would be nice if there was more talent rising to the top. Now, including Ron Rivera. Stephen A. just mentioned this. There are currently six minority head coaches in the NFL. Stephen A., is Tagliabue, the former commissioner, right about the Rooney Rule? He's absolutely right. There's no question about that. First of all, five is not enough. It's not fair, particularly in a league that's better than 65 to 70 percent African-American. We all know this. But more importantly, when you dissect and really look at the Rooney rule, it's not just about the NFL. It's about all these professional sports leagues. And it's about something that needs to be said that's very, really been said. When you talk about diversity and diversity policies, let's just call it what it is. It's been very, very disingenuous. There's no way around it. You've got a situation where it's limited policies, and more importantly, there's no policing. And so as a result of that, where's the consequences for failure for those who fail to comply? There's really none as far as I'm concerned. If you think about it, Max, when you think about affirmative action, obviously it was introduced in 61 by the Kennedy administration, ultimately exacted and implemented in the law uh, by, uh, by the Johnson administration in 1965 when Lyndon B. Johnson tried to explain what it was all about. It's sort of like evening the playing field. And what you had to follow was in corporate America, that is, Molly, Max, is a centralized policy, whereas you literally attached incentives to the policy to sort of provoke executives to do the right thing. For example, they would have things attached to their bonuses. Your bonuses were bigger. If you addressed things, people called it quotas and things of that nature because they were trying to knock it down and decry it. But ultimately, individuals who were otherwise prone to be unfair were incentivized to be fair because they had things attached to it from a bonus perspective. You don't have that going on here. There's no individual in the league office, whether it's the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, that I've heard of. Now, the NBA doesn't need it because they have a great record on issues of diversity. But when it comes to Major League Baseball, when it comes to NFL, when it comes to other sports, where's the centralized figure? Where Where's the individual as the overseer? Where's the office that focuses on it to make sure that candidates like general managers, not just coaches, but general managers, scouts, player personnel directors, et cetera, et cetera, that you have these individuals inserted on a list where, you know, there's this a, a bunch of qualified candidates to speak of. When we were in Pittsburgh doing the show for Pittsburgh, it's one of the things during my radio show there that I sat down and spoke to Mike Tomlin about. He was very passionate about it, and he spoke about those things, along with a bevy of other African-American coaches who have called me off the record. The bottom line is you have a situation where it's left up to the devices of individual teams and individual owners who are not prone to do the right thing, which they've shown on many occasions, and they still continue to show. Um, the, the question, you know, we're, we're talking about here is the Rooney Rule and, and the idea that Tagliabue thinks it's, you know, hasn't been working the way it's intended. Is he right about it? No, I think it is working the way yeah. it was intended. I think it's, listen, we had Bill Polian on the other day, and he talked about we, they need to get the pipeline full of yeah. talent, which they haven't done a good enough job, et cetera. But when I asked him point blank, and this happens whenever I ask executives whose uh, hearts are in the right place, it seems to me, about that, they, they, no, the Rooney Rule is a necessary first step. The issue is it's not the only step that needs to be taken. I mean, and that includes, by the way, challenging uh, assu implicit assumptions that people who are in positions of power have about race. There are many uh, aspects to it and many different kinds of uh, avenues of attacking the problem. And the Rooney Rule was an important and effective first step. But it's not like you can just come up with that rule and... Racism is over. You know, I mean, it doesn't work that way. We're not post-racial, and that's not the only thing that needs to be done. The question as to whether it's been effective, I would say yes. You brought up Mike Tomlin, who, is it ironic or is it fitting that Tomlin gets an interview with the Pittsburgh Steelers' Rooney and, the, you know, and, and as a result of the interview gets the job? 
And there are other examples uh, uh, of that. And I think that that's been a good thing, but clearly yep. more must be done. But I think you're misconstruing what Paul Tagliabue was it was act was at was answering. We're not a, that Paul Tagliabue, myself, and others would never say there's been no benefit to the Rooney Rule. If I thought there were no benefit, I would have said that when Bill Polian was on our show last week. That's not what we're implying here. What we're saying is, although there was progress from the Rooney Rule's inception. As we look at it now and the advancement one anticipated would ultimately take place. That's what's not happening. No. By mere virtue of the fact that Bill Polian said that there's a pipeline that needs to be addressed and improved and buffered. The fact that in the year 2016, we still don't have that in place. That infrastructure is not there. That those things are not being addressed. That things are not being centralized to such a degree where teams and owners can be held accountable for unfair practices, for example. Those kind of things have to be addressed. The yes. Rooney Rule was supposed to eradicate the need for any of that. But by virtue of the fact that there is still a need for that, highlights the fact that people are still not about doing the right thing. Well, I and think that's the issue here that Paul Tagliable was speaking and, to. And, okay, fine. I, I find that hard to disagree with, right? But I think the, the, my big point, at least about this subject, is the Rooney Rule is excellent. It's good that it's implemented. It's had a positive impact. Much more needs to be done. And if the idea is, hey, the Rooney Rule is there and now everything will be okay so long as it's rigorously applied... I think that flies in the face of the reality that generally, if people are not from cultures of persecution and don't identify with the struggle, or at least it's not a priority for them, then you well, come up with a rule that addresses the problem for your business it, it, from a public perception point of view, maybe even a PR point of view, maybe even from your own kind of internal moral compass, right? It satisfies that, and now you can go on. And the point is, much more has to be done, and maybe it's not as important to many of the people in positions of power as it should be. Well, exactly, Max. And that latter point is why what Paul Tagliabue said is so profound. Because the rule is in place for you to exercise a level of fairness. But the fact that you're unwilling to do so speaks to the heart and the soul or the absence thereof as it pertains to this particular issue. So when you have a league who's profiting off of the very kinds of folks they want to alienate from positions of influence or power, that's why things need to be centralized. That's why the importance of it needs to be elevated. And that's why it's important what Paul Tagliabue said, because he's saying that what it was intended to accomplish, ultimately it's not doing so because it hasn't legislated the heart and soul of people the way we were anticipating it would. And ultimately, that's going to be a problem considering the, dem the demographics that exist in our league. I totally understand it, and I applaud him for saying yeah, well, so. Well, he brought attention to it. And, and the mandate needs to extend to assistant and coordinator positions. In, in GMs. Yes, but also so that pipeline we're talking about, so the lower levels, the guys get an opportunity as well to reach those head coaching and get the right experience. And college sports. Yes. College sports has to come along because we need a pipeline from them too. Of course. Very good point. Let's leave it there. Marvin Lewis is in his 14th season with the Bengals, but has yet to win a playoff game, and he's received a lot of flack for that over the years. But normally, his team is solid in the regular season, but this year they haven't lived up to the hype. Cincinnati is 4-7-1, third in the AFC North. But Lewis, he's not feeling the heat, telling our Catherine Terrell he isn't worried about his job status because he talks to the team's owner, Mike Brown, quite often. Here it is. I report to Mike, and that's all that really matters that way. I think the thing with Mike is that he's been in this business a long time, and he takes every loss as hard as I do or anybody else does here. But on the other hand, he trusts me to move the football team in the right direction. That's the commitment that he's made to me, and that's the commitment I've made to him, to get his football team in the playoffs, through the playoffs, all the time, and be world champions. Stephen A., What's your reaction to Marvin Lewis saying that he has no concern over his job status? Well, I think it's a disgrace. Uh, Marvin Lewis should have been fired years ago. Uh, let me say that. And we're talking, to, you're listening to an individual that obviously is a proud black man who speaks on behalf 
uh, of my community when he talks about the paucity of opportunities for African Americans in the coaching profession, especially on the collegiate level, and to a lesser degree on the professional level. We may have five, uh, only five black head coaches today. I'm not saying that Marvin Lewis doesn't deserve to be a head coach in the NFL. I'm saying he shouldn't be the head coach in Cincinnati because in that particular venue, he has failed. He has been to the playoffs five consecutive years, true. He has been to the playoffs seven times in his, you know, now 14th season as head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. He has zero, zero playoff victories. And with that level of ineptitude in the postseason, because last time I checked, you cannot win the Super Bowl championship if you don't win a playoff game. You have to win at least three playoff games in a season to win a Super Bowl championship. He has not won three playoff games in his career, nor has he won two, nor has he won one. It is absolutely positively zero. And to send the kind of message to the Cincinnati Bengals fans, knowing that they would rather have another head coach, knowing that they are absolutely and utterly disgusted with your level of ineptitude, for you to come out and be associated with a public comment talking about you are secure, it just gives credence to all of those who look at an African-American who questioned their qualifications, who questioned whether or not they're deserving of an opportunity. And I will be the first to tell you, it actually hurts my heart to say that. I don't want to say that about somebody from my community. I take no joy in this. But how in God's name are individuals on the come up, whether they're African-American, Latino or others, even white individuals, how can we possibly speak on behalf of their level of ineptitude and ignore Marvin Lewis? How can we expect those on the come up to get an opportunity if people like Marvin Lewis are allowed to keep their job? The only positive thing you can say about Marvin Lewis is that he's not Jeff Fisher. There's actually someone that's worse than him. That's Jeff Fisher. But Jeff Fisher actually went to a Super Bowl once upon a time. He actually does have playoff wins on his resume, which is something that Marvin Lewis does not have in more than a decade. So my position, Max, is clear. He should be gone. And the fact that he's made that statement if ownership isn't willing to publicly come out and decry that, then they're not holding him accountable. And if they're not holding him accountable, they are taking fans in the city of Cincinnati for granted. They need to give those folks their money back or those folks need to stand up and protest that somebody else needs to be the head coach for the Cincinnati Bengals and we are no longer going to support and patronize this product until you get somebody else up in there. 14 years without one single playoff victory, that is a disgrace that would not be tolerated too many other players outside of Stan Kroenke's organization, evidently, with the Los Angeles Rams. I just totally disagree with you about this. Of course, not winning playoff game, game ever is damning. For Marvin Lewis, but ask the Chargers or the Jets or you miss you mentioned the Rams or the Browns or a bunch of other teams if they would take a coach that gets them to the playoffs every year where you got a shot. Now he misses in the playoffs so often I don't think it's just like a coin flip where it keeps happening to come up tails right. He's actually there is a, an issue there I agree. I don't know if it's unresolvable. I mean, uh, Jason Garrett couldn't coach until recently, until he got an offensive line and a quarterback and a running back, and a running back at least. Right now, all of a sudden, he coaches really well, doesn't he? And we're anticipating he's going to coach well in the playoffs. Marvin Lewis isn't a bad coach. He's not Bill Belichick, but there's only one Belichick. There's a Pete Carroll or a Mike Tomlin. We're talking about the cream of the crop. I don't think Marvin Lewis is that, but he's better than a lot. And, and then there's the kind of sad commentary about the reality of... of um, race in this country and the history of race where if you see a an african-american head coach or an african-american person in a position where um, african-americans are underrepresented then there's this sense that they have to achieve out of proportion in order to justify keeping the job or at least they are not allowed to fail as much as maybe a white counterpart you brought up Jeff Fisher. And while that may be the reality in terms of the way it feels for African Americans and the way the power structure actually treats that issue, that doesn't mean that's the way it should be. And Marvin Lewis, I think, I think there is good reason to say, look, that ship has sailed with Marvin Lewis. His best shot was last year. His bad luck, Andy Dalton, got hurt going into the playoffs. And then this year they seem to regress. But they ain't bad. And they're never really bad, and they're usually pretty good, and he's been the coach the whole time. 
I think you are selling him short. Stephen A., he did lose his offensive coordinator uh, as well. Uh, in his defense. Uh, excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. He has no defense. He lost his offensive coordinator one day. He lost Hugh Jackson last year. He lost Jay Gruden a couple of years before that. He lost Zimmer, a defensive coordinator. But the point is, at one time he had him and still didn't win a playoff game. There's no defense for this. And by the way, Max Kellerman, I never said that he does not deserve to be a head coach. I did not question the football credentials or qualifications of Marvin Lewis as a head coach. What I'm saying is that your record in this particular locale mandates that somebody else get a shot at the job. If you've had 14 years and you still can't win a playoff game, that is more than enough to justify booting you out the door and giving somebody else an opportunity. Now, an organization that never makes the playoffs might ultimately follow up by hiring you. I would have no problem with that. Okay, okay fine. You're not accustomed to making the playoffs. Marvin Lewis clearly has proven he could get you to the playoffs. That's fair. But in terms of winning a playoff game, you got 14 years in a particular locale and you can't win a playoff that's game? That's fair. Y'all going to argue with me about being unfair to Marvin no, Lewis? No, no, that's Please. fair. And I said the ship may have sailed this year. Last year looked like the opportunity. The window closed. When Dalton got hurt, they regressed. That may be it for Marvin Lewis in Cincinnati. That's not really what I'm talking about. What you're responding to is... I'm talking about him in Cincinnati. Yes, and him talking about the fact that he's not worried about his job, and that also seems to rankle you. And my point is, if you have the job and you're trying to win That's games, what are you supposed to do? Worry about things you can't control? You just put your head down and do your job, and that's basically what he's saying he's doing. And by the way, he doesn't do his job better than everyone, but he does his job better than some guys with, uh, with jobs in the NFL. And, and um, he's kind of hard luck last year that he didn't have his quarterback well, in the playoffs. He's also, he, he is also a dude that religiously accepts less money then typical head coaches are paid, which is why he keeps that job, okay. because he comes cheaper. Good and strategy. more importantly, he uses his position. And I'm telling you what I know here, inside information here, he uses his position according to numerous players that I have spoken to to try to encourage them to accept less than their market value. Why don't you take this money? It's a good offer. Why don't you accept it? Why don't you be grateful? As opposed to them getting what their earning potential and marketability would allow. This all in the midst of you repeatedly failing to win one single playoff game in 14 years, please, somebody need to go someplace with that. Marvin Lewis needs to be gone in Cincinnati, period. Patriots.